Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Kevin from Trinity Lutheran Church. Thanks for joining with me on our last session of going through the book of Acts. This Easter season, we've looked throughout the entire book of Acts. And in these next couple of days, we'll go through the last three chapters, through chapter 28, the end of the book. And that's precisely what I'd love to look at with you today. You see, the end of the book of Acts is a strange ending. It's almost as though it leaves everything unresolved. With the Apostle Paul in house arrest in Rome, he has begun witnessing and sharing the gospel to anyone who will come into that house and listen to him. But what is it precisely that happens? Will he be put on trial? Will the emperor hear from him? What will be the verdict? Will he be set free at some point? None of these things are resolved. Now, I would think that if that were any other book, that was the wrong way to end. Even in the uh, chapter 27, the next to last chapter, you'll see this incredible account of the shipwreck of uh, the Apostle Paul uh, and with Luke along with him. And this is incredibly adventurous and, and harrowing. It seems like the beginning of something rather than the end. And I think that the author, Luke, is doing this on purpose because what he has to say to you and me and to every reader of the book of Acts from the time that it was first written down until today is this, that the story of the book of Acts is not the story of the Apostle Paul and it's not the story of the Apostle Peter, but it's the story of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus told his disciples before he ascended to the right hand of the Father. But they are to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and that he would be with them. He was going to send them first into Jerusalem and then into Judea and then Samaria and beyond to the ends of the earth. And the book of Acts is the account of Jesus doing just that. He is faithful to bring about that which he commands. He uh, is the one who sends, but it is the same God who sanctifies, who makes a people holy and set aside for himself. And all of these things he does out of his own divine fatherly goodness, out of his love for you and for me. And so the end of the book of Acts isn't the end of the story, but rather the beginning of your story. You see, your life matters to God. And not only in some eternal sense, but it is God's desire to guide you through this life, through all the days and the years that lie ahead of you, and to give you your own adventure and your own story of exactly what it is and how it is that Jesus Christ is going to be working in your life and how he has worked in your life and how he is bringing you to something that is maybe far more difficult than you imagined, maybe far more adventurous maybe than you'd even desire. But it's something absolutely incredible. Because where God is at work, we call those places miracle. And he is at work in your life. And so I hope that you've been blessed by the time that we've spent together. I know that you've been blessed uh, spending a month reading through a, uh, a rather large and important book in the Bible. I know that will be a blessing to you, not only during this time, but as you go forward. And as you go forward, remember your place in it. What is it that God is calling you to? What would he have you do? And how is he calling you into a future that is just as incredible, just as filled with miracle and wonder as it was for those first Christian people? I look forward to finding that out with you here at Trinity. God bless each and every one of you.